All right, it's the third trading day of the week, and you are tuned in to Market Pulse live on New Central in partnership with Nymetrics. If you want a detailed breakdown of market activities for the day, this is the place to be. And I am Joanna Mustafa. Uh, we've got a great show lined up for you. And uh, let's begin in the wake of Ghana's uh, Eurobond default in 2021. Africa bondholders are coming together to form a unified negotiating bloc. Uh, this will be interesting to explore and why this matters, of course. Uh, also, inflation data in Nigeria, uh, in Nigeria, right? Inflation is hitting a 27-year high and has outpaced the market's returns. Can the NGX keep up? Uh, we'll have that conversation as well. Of course, we'll also be playing catch-up on the largest public offering in Nigerian history, 400, uh, for, sorry, yeah, 400.5 billion naira, which is set to be raised by GCCO. But let's begin with a quick market recap today. Uh, on the NGX, the markets were bullish for the most part until the very last minute. Massive sell pressures on MTN stocks triggered a 3.4, sorry, yeah, 3.4 percent decline. Um, in MTN stocks, and that effectively basically handed the markets uh, to the bulls. We can see it there. We're still, you know, in the 100,000 uh, all share index zone, but we are down 0.04%. Coming now to the top gainers, Qtix hasn't missed a show uh, on this list recently. It's appreciated 46%. Um, you know, we can see that it there in third position as the third gain. It's appreciated 46% in the last four days. A lot of buy bids on Qtix, as we can see there. Oan Dill, uh, Julius Bega is also there. And United Capital is also number one. Um, analysts are having a hard time figuring out what is driving you know, the price there. But uh, we can see it as a top gainer today. Coming to top losers, MTN, no surprises, of course, with the story you know, I hit you with earlier, right? Uh, you know, they... You know, uh, there were a lot of sell pressures on MTN stocks. But yes, we can see FTN Coco um, and the likes there on the top losers list. When we come to movers, um, a lot of buy bids on Qtix as well. Um, so that is as regards the top movers. Currency markets as well, still not any, you know, significant gains in that regard in spite of uh, CBN's efforts, right? We've seen their efforts over the past couple of days, but we're not seeing it reflect on the markets just yet. Uh, but we do have Mukta Mohammed who will be joining us after the break to assess the pulse of uh, today's market. So stay with us. All right, you're tuned in to Market Pulse. Right now, we're picking up the pulse of the day with Mukta Mohammed, the founder, Finance with Mukta. It's a pleasure to have you in, sir. Having me, thank you. All right, so, so let's begin, right? For the first time, a regional euro bond investor group has been formed uh, specifically to participate in a euro bond restructuring process. Why does this matter, and how much of a departure is it from what is obtainable at the likes of the Paris Club? Well, the difference is um, the Africans investors, they seem to they all seem to um, understand the market and how it's played. And um, if you look at African euro bonds, for sometimes these days you see that um, we just largely give them so much returns over the normal um, they would definitely have if they were investing in their company in terms of rate of return. Um, we we will move, sometimes we give as high as um, nine to ten percent, which is uh, practically very difficult for them to get in their own country. So I think it's a welcome development um, that um, finally we are having people like Africans coming together to realize that to to make sure that Africans are not sub um, short charged or over overcharged. I think it's good, and they seem to know the terrain, and that will give room for debt renegotiation and again like i said most importantly i think for me is that there uh, will not be seeing those high rates in yeah. terms of debt servicing or debt repayment that most I'm african countries suffer with, especially when they need euro bond. hopefully yeah. that's what i think hopefully all right thank you very much for that i'm sure kenya will be wishing they chose a better time to default um but let's move on now uh, there's an ongoing conversation in securities markets of a, a growing trend where private investors pounce on, you know, Nairobi Stock Exchange's listed firms um, and then basically remove them from the boards. And the latest target is the iconic blue chip firm Bamburi Cement. Uh, we've been talking about that, you know, recently on the show. 
Um, but we know that they will be delisted from the NSC once Amazon's buyout offer pulls through. Uh, what are the implications of this trend, right? Um, especially when you consider the blow that this deals to the president, President Ruto's plan to strengthen the local boards. Well, um, is you know, to be listed on a local boards is, uh, is optional. Um, you don't force people to be listed. And then when you are listed, you are open for scrutiny. And so what you see happen most of these delisting is that some of these um, people that are buying into this company are not ready to be opened or so much scrutiny, penalty, update report is not um, sent on time. And so they are not ready for corporate, full corporate governance. That's what I think. Um, you know, it's not only the Nairobi Stock Exchange, it happened uh, global stock exchange, but especially Africa, it has become the trend. Even in Nigeria, you see that. In South Africa, you see that. And this is due to the fact that also the most of the exchange in Africa have not developed a strong corporate governance and um, that will make it almost impossible when you are listed to delist without um, taking investors into uh, consideration, especially paying investors value that the investors think, not the value that you think they, those shares are. I mean, until we get to the point whereby if you are delisting, then the onions lie on the investor to tell you how much they want to sell their shares. And then you have to look at it um, before you, if we don't do that, um, We'll continue to have an easy way, easy um, going out and coming in, especially most of these big blue chip companies. And um, they, they tend to stay in the market when things are red. And then when things become a little bit better, then they now begin to think oh. about if they want to leave the market. And meanwhile, investors have really suffered with them in their bad times. So I think, um, by and large, I think what most exchange should be doing in terms of corporate governance is to make sure that if you are exiting the market, you exit at a price that is agreed by investors, not the price that you are throwing at investors because you are the majority shareholder. Mm. That will work. We saw that happen in Nigeria with Unilever when they want, wanted to delist. And then, and the, 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 the shareholders were not ready to receive what they wanted to give to them. And the exchange also stood by the shareholders. Well, even if that has turned the other way around now because of the negative shareholders form that they are not operating in. But by and large, I think um, we should begin to think of corporate governance and making it um, even if you have to delete, you have to deliver at a higher price. Indeed, indeed. And of course, that will be beneficial for you know investors as well. Now, let's come to Nigeria. In Nigeria, we're seeing inflation data for June. It was released uh, earlier this week. Uh, it's now at a 27-year high of 34.19%. As it stands, the inflation rate in the country is now outperforming uh, NGX's returns. One has to give, we know that, right? Are we going to see inflation? Do you reckon inflation will flatten? Or do you see the NGX picking up the strides in the coming months? I think the NGX has done well. I think they will pick up the stride. And, and sometimes when you look at this, um, the NGX total index, performance you sometimes just look at the total index performance but when you look at individual stocks sometimes you realize that most of them are also be able to outperform inflation now the challenge with nigeria is not really the inflationary pressure that everybody thinks inflation is there but what is causing inflation is what we've not been able to address which has to do with effects of volatility especially due to the fact that the majority of what we consume we definitely import into this country and high interest rate i mean high tariff of these goods when they come in. But um, the good thing is that the government is also trying to look at um, ways of um, reducing those tariffs or making it tariff-free for household items, especially food items. Mm -hmm. That could have a positive impact um, bringing the inflation. And that once inflation comes down, the NGS, what would expect the NGS to keep going, to, to go up be, be above what it is today? Why are we saying that? It's, mm -hmm. um, uh, because by the time the banks finish their offers, you will see a lot of activities on the NGS. I think the NGS has really slowed down because of a lot of investors are beginning to look at uh, taking their offers, especially their right issues. So there's no so much liquidity mm -hmm. in the market now to, to move the market the way it should move. Sure. But, and again, you must know that we're in the second year, second half year, um, yeah. and we've not seen those half year numbers start coming in for most companies. So once those numbers start coming in, I it think the NGS will be able to go up with inflation. And I expect inflation right. to come down. Mm. Um, in the coming months, uh, and then I don't down. expect the NGS mm. to come down in the coming months. All right, inflation to come down in the coming months. We will see. PwC has said perhaps you know by December it will be down to th below thirty percent. We'll see whether or not that plays out. But we're seeing joint efforts to bring down inflation from the CBN as well uh, with rate hikes. 
Um, we have another MPC meeting coming up next week. Yay or nay when it comes to, you know, another hike, right? What do you reckon with this uh, meeting next week? Do you see another hike in the country's benchmark rates? Yeah, it will be suicidal if we have any hmm. hike because the challenge is not yeah. businesses are suffering, especially the manufacturing sector. So yeah. I expect them not to have those high because already we are doing over 16, 26% lending, almost getting to 30%. So I expect them to leave rates, especially due to the fact that a lot of um, um, systems have been put in place to bring down inflation. But like I said, uh, the major problem in, in the market is not inflation so so much. It has to do with the exchange. If we're able to control that, then inflation will definitely come down. But I think, mm. I personally don't think they should hike it. All right, thank you so much uh, for that. You're saying the issue there is with the exchange rates. Um, and we know that CBN is also doing its bits with the exchange rate. Thank you so much, Mukta Mohammed. Founder Finance with Mukta. Um, it's been a pleasure having you on. Up next, a growing number okay. of Nigerian banks are tapping the country's stock market. We talked about it just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, they're tapping the country's stock markets to raise fresh capital. Three banks already in the race. Wemmer Bank, I guess, is on its marks. But we're going to be zooming in on a particular bank stock uh, that seems to be fighting back. Let's see. David Olujimi will be joining me next to discuss this. So stay tuned. You're watching Market Pulse, time for a quick spotlight, right? Uh, we want to get a feel of your general sentiments across a particular stock, uh, policy direction or initiative. Today it's a stock, actually. Um, earlier in the year, CBN raised capital requirements for bank uh, with proposed capital to be raised, you know, amongst banks is, you know, spilling to upward of two trillion naira. We've seen the scramble in the markets, and I can't even say we've reached its peak. Fidelity Bank, of course, they set the pace uh, late last month, 20th of June precisely, with their public offer and rights issue a hybrid there. Access Holding picked up the baton last Monday, and this Monday, Guarantee Trust Holdings Company announced um, you know, the opening of its offer for a subscription of 9 billion ordinary shares of 50 cover each at 44, you know, 44 naira, 50 cover per ordinary share, uh, which is the largest public offering since God knows when, when, right? David, tell me, when was the last time we saw a public offering this large? Well, you never. We've never seen a 400 never. billion naira public offer in the market before. But in dollar value, we've seen even much more. In 2007, Access Bank raised about a billion dollars in the market. That was just about 140 billion naira thereabout. But this is the first time we are seeing that amount, 400 billion in naira value. Hmm. So, I mean, this is record breaking, basically. It's history uh, in the making here with this recapitalization exercise. Now, GC code numbers haven't been fantastic, especially in recent years, right? Uh, the public offer share price is at uh, 45, about 45 naira. Uh, do you consider this a competitive price considering, you know, the price of its peers? Um, sorry, I'd like to make a correction there. Uh, GT, GT's numbers have been fantastic, I would, I would like to say. Okay, from where you're standing. <laughs> but um, the price they're offering is at, um, is like less than 1% discount from their original market price, from their market price presently. So what we've seen in the market, we've seen a situation where at the announcement of the recapitalization, banks, the market went berserk. Basically, banks lost a lot of their market, a lot of their market price. There was like massive decline. And um, in, in um, April 2020, in April of this year, banks, banking stocks almost lost, lost about 25% of their share price. So for GT Bank, GT Bank was trading at about 52 Naira this year, 53 Naira. At a point, I think they got to 54 Naira. But the decline affected them so much, they were one of the most affected when it comes to the decline. They declined down to about 42 Naira. In fact, 40 Naira at some point. Right. So the pricing is fair. So I think we've just seen what we've seen in April to May, we've seen We've seen what we would have seen this time play out already. Mm. So the banks are just offering their share prices at what they consider the fair price, the fair amount for their shares. So um, example is what Aigboje I, Aikimukwede said when they were doing their facts behind the issues. He said that the earnings per share, the numbers behind their, behind their share price show that 
their 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 share price, the offer share price is at a is 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 worth it. Okay. So he was saying it's basically worth it. So it's the same thing for GT. GT has I would say their share price right now and what they are offering is correspondent. It is it Every is, bank is, is wants fair. to defend, you know, their price, right? Every bank would want to defend their price. I guess it's left to investors to choose whether, you know, they're buying into it or not at that yeah. particular price. Uh, but we're also witnessing a flurry of companies, not just banks, right, proposing to come to the exchange to raise funds. What a time, right, for the NGX. Now yeah. give us some insight into this flurry and the opportunities that they could present for investors. So we've seen um, out, outside of the banks, which of which we know a lot more banks are coming. Outside of the banks, we've seen na a Nigerian bureaus propose a 600 billion um, rights issues. International bureaus did their own. We've not had data from international bureaus about their rights issues, where they offered almost um, 600 million. They offered they offered 10 new shares per every share owned. So that was like a lot. Then we also seen Fitin. Fitin is proposing a 20 billion share offering program. We don't know how they are going to do that. It's going to be a public offering or is the right issue. But the issue we have now is that many many of these companies are beginning to see the potential that exists in the capital market. All right, they are listed on the capital market one for the ability to raise capital, basically. All right. So, that, speaking of potential, right, in the capital markets, right, uh, there's this breaking story here with the president asking the National Assembly uh, to amend the 2024 Finance Act to tax unrealized forex gains of traditional banks to fund capital infrastructure development, you know, and so on and so forth. What are your thoughts on this? This is, this is, it is, um, it is groundbreaking. Hmm. It is, it's actually, it puts a lot of things in the balance. It puts a lot of things hanging on the balance because, the CBN told banks don't don't use any of your any of your FX gains for day-to-day -day activities. Don't use it to pay dividends. Don't use it to sort out your run-ins because you are going to be using it to hedge against future occurrences. Mm. So I feel like the president probably feels like okay, um, we've seen all we can see with the currency instability. We've seen all we can see. Mm -hmm. Maybe he feels like. It, We've come to the end of that cycle. All right. And man feels like, oh, it's time to just uh, let's enjoy from some of these. Okay. Okay. We'll see. And of course, it's a breaking story. So we'll see how this news is being received. Yeah, but we'll see how it plays out in the yes, end. Yes, it's always a pleasure having you in, Thank David you. Thank Olujimi, you. Thank financial you so market much. analyst with Narometrics. Now, let's get your pulse on the conversation. GT Co's second public offering. Uh, and the largest public offering in uh, you know the exchange's history. Are you buying, selling, or holding? There's a poll up live on our Metrics X page, so make sure you join in and share your perspective on that. Right now, we are heading to the African markets. All right, down to the African markets. It's a mixed performance across the exchange that exchanges that we track uh, here in Africa. We've seen the Jersey fall short of their uh, 82,000 plus new record on the all share index. Uh, there we see the, uh, um, the JSE Johannesburg Stock Exchange losing 0.36% decline. Um, Casablanca, Morocco Stock Exchange is up 0.53%. Egypt as well up, uh, Nairobi Stock Exchange down, and Ghana. Um, 2.69% there. Um, so it'll be interesting to see this mixed performance and where things go, whether or not Johannesburg Stock Exchange will continue its decline and, you know, reverse the gains that they have made in, you know, of recent times. But all eyes on the markets, of course, um, as well with the NGX, you know, ahead as well with the cap recapitalization exercise. We'll see how far this goes. Uh, Fidelity Access, now GTCO, who's next? Wema, maybe. Um, as well, we'll be keeping our eyes on the regional Euro bond investment group. How will African markets receive the response and respond um, to the developments? Uh, it's better you stay informed and you stay tuned to Market Pulse right here every weekday, 4 p.m. Uh, News Central in partnership with Narometrics. I I'm leaving you with the African markets, right, and uh, our markets, I beg your pardon, outside of the African continent. I am Joanna Mustafa. Enjoy the rest of your evening.
News now begins in the west of the continent where the Nigerian president, Bola Chinubu, has submitted a proposal to the Senate for the consideration and approval of additional 6.2 trillion naira to the 27.5 trillion naira 2024 budget. In a letter read by Senate President Gotula Pabio during Wednesday plenary, Tinubu specifically requested the withdrawal of 3.2 trillion naira from the Consolidated Revenue Fund for Capital Expenditure. Additionally, he sought another 3 trillion naira for the additional recurrent expenditure for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2024. The letter also included a request to amend the Finance Act of 2023 to impose and charge a windfall tax on banks, outlining provisions for demonstration of these tax and related matters. The Nigerian Senate has removed Senator Ali Undume as the chief whip, replacing him with Senator Tahir Mongono. The change followed the directive issued in a letter by the national chairman of the party, Umaru Genduje, and National Secretary, Senator Bashir Ajibola. The letter was read during plenary and re the request was to put to the voice vote by Senate President Godswill Akbabio, receiving loud affirmation from all APC senators. The APC accused Ndume of making hurtful comments against President Paul Atinobu's administration. In a recent interview, Ndume alleged that some ministers and lawmakers could no longer reach Tinubu to relay the prevailing economic hardship and hunger in the country. Justice James Omotosha of the Federal High Court in Abuja on Wednesday nullified the impeachment of Philip Schweibo as the deputy governor of Edo State. In his ruling, Justice Omotosha ordered Schweibo's reinstatement, citing the Edo State House of Assembly's failure to follow due process in the impeachment. The court also invalidated the appointment of Shaibo's replacement. Justice Omotosha held that the allegations used to justify the impeachment did not constitute gross misconduct and were legally untenable. He further directed the Inspector General of Police to provide Shaibo with the necessary security to resume office and perform his duties until the end of his tenure. In the meantime, the Edo State House of Assembly has appealed a federal high court judgment overturning the impeachment of former Deputy Governor Philip Schwaibel. Now the Assembly filed a stay of execution pending appeal. Schwaibel was impeached in April 2024 following allegations of misconduct, including perjury and leaking government secret. He was removed from office by a vote of 18 to 1. The impeachment followed a report by a seven-man investigative panel. Governor God 